My name is Bill Ledger and I'm Professor of Obstetrics and Gynaecology at the University of New South Wales and I'm the Director of Reproductive Medicine at the Royal Hospital for Women here in Randwick. I really like using the Sense needle and, and since I first picked it up about a year and a half ago we've gradually introduced it so pretty much it's the needle we use for all of our procedures now and the procedure we use it for is egg collection. That's really at the core of the whole process of IVF. The women have had their ovarian stimulation with FSH They've had their final trigger to mature the oocytes, that's usually HCG, and then about 36 hours later they come to the operating theatre. They've had a sedation, or a light, an, a light anaesthesia, and then using the vaginal ultrasound we're able to guide the needle to collect eggs from the left ovary and then the right ovary. The follicles are quite easy to see on ultrasound because they're fluid filled and quite large, and then using the sense needle I can aspirate each follicle in turn. That puts follicular fluid, to the embryologist who's just across the theatre from me and she can tell me whether we're finding eggs or not. The reason that we've switched to using the sense needle from other follicle aspiration needles is really twofold. Firstly, the tip narrows from a 17 gauge to a 20 gauge and that means it's less traumatic so therefore less vaginal bleeding, less trauma to the vaginal wall and less trauma to the ovary itself while we're doing the egg collection. And the corollary to that is that the patient has less perioperative pain so if we only have a light sedation, it can be painful to have the eggs collected. And also afterwards when they're recovering, there's less of that post-procedural ache that they have if you use a bigger needle. The sense needle is a little different from the standard 16 or 17 gauge needle that we're all used to. The first thing I say that's different is it really does slip into the follicle very easily. You don't have to push to get it to go through the vaginal wall and then the peritoneum and the wall of the follicle. So be aware that it's going to go very, very easily into the follicle. The first two or three times you do that, you have to be careful not to overshoot, but you quickly get used to it. The second thing is because of the 20 gauge tip, the flow of fluid when you're aspirating is a little slower but it really doesn't impact on the overall time for the procedure. It's trivial once you're used to it. Apart from that, it's pretty much the same as any other egg collection. The needle tip is easy to visualize. You can see where you are at all, all times and it is very similar to a pickup with a normal 17 gauge needle. The sense needle is significantly finer gauge than the conventional needle. It's more um, often likely to bend within the ovary if you are too um, aggressive with it. So it's a matter of being gentle. It's a matter of moving in and out more than swinging the needle across within the ovary. And I find quite often it's helpful when I've aspirated a few follicles from one part of a very highly stimulated ovary to retract the needle back to the hilum and then reorganize the whole of the ultrasound and then penetrate again. So we're really going in a series of vertical punctures rather than swinging around within the ovary. I find I feel more confident doing a difficult egg collection with the sense needle than with a conventional needle because I'm less likely to do damage. Sometimes the ovaries are seated quite high in the pelvis. For example, someone who has adhesions from endometriosis, the ovary might be adjacent to the uterus and harder to access. Others, in an obese patient, for example, it might be harder to visualize the ovary. And I know that with the sense needle I'm, uh, needle, I'm likely to do less damage to surrounding tissues while I'm trying to reach the follicles than with a wider bore conventional needle. The visibility is the same. It's easy to see the tip, it's laser etched and looks good on ultrasound. And the same principle as always is keep the needle tip in direct vision at all times and then you're in the safe space of the ovarian follicle even if it is higher and more difficult to reach. I think the advantages of the sense needle are probably threefold. We want our patients to go home quickly and to have minimal trauma from the procedure. So if we can reduce the blood loss that they experience by using a narrower gauge needle like the sense needle, and if we can reduce the perioperative pain, that means that they're going to go home more quickly from hospital. It also means that if they have to go around again because the IVF didn't work first time, they're more likely to come back to us because the experience they had was less negative than if they'd had a more painful and more bloody procedure. And then thirdly, look at the economics of it. 
we're able to collect the same number of eggs more efficiently and with less trauma and less of the rare but occasional problems with bleeding that you encounter with the conventional needle. So overall, I think over the course of a year, it would be a cost saving to a unit if they use the Sense needle compared with a conventional one. I think across Australia, the uptake of the Sense needle has been fairly widespread and most people will be able to find a colleague or someone to talk to about their experience with it. Here at Royal Hospital for Women, we uniquely use the Sense needle for all cases. We've moved away from the other needles just because of the advantages that we're talking about this morning. We tend to use the Sense needle with a pump setting of 135 millimetres of mercury. That's a little bit higher than most people would use with a 16 or 17 gauge needle, but it seems to work perfectly well. And we don't have problems of excessive fracture of zona or, or loss of oocytes using that approach. The Time taken to aspirate a follicle is a little slower than with a larger gauge needle, but it really is quite trivial and we find we can complete the same number of procedures in the same number of hours in the morning as with the conventional needle. It's the turnaround time that slows you down in egg collections. The actual time doing the vaginal scan and collecting the eggs is always quite short. It's the sedation of the patient, the identification check, the preparation, and then the recovery before the next patient that can be brought through that dictates the speed at which you can work. I don't find that the sense needle really slows us down at all significantly. It is interesting how procedures in IVF evolve. We're cautious people. The pregnancy rate is the most important thing, and we don't want to do anything to jeopardize that. So introducing any new product has to be done very carefully. And what we've seen over the last few years is the increasing participation of vitrolife at various stages along the journey from egg collection up to embryo transfer. So we now use the Sense needle for almost all of our egg collections. The embryology is performed almost um, invariably in an embryo scope, which has given us significant advantages over the old incubators, being able to visualize the embryo every few minutes and create a better way of selecting which embryo to transfer and also not having to remove the embryo from the incubator to assess it and then put it back, I think has made improvement in the ability to grow the best quality of blastocysts. Those blastocysts, of course, are all cultured in vitro life media, so the whole laboratory package is efficient and is the favorite of our embryologists here at the Royal Hospital for Women.